Thanks, Andrea. Um, here's the title of my uh, presentation. Um, if you are here in the last few uh, years for the summit, I present some of the newer uh, emerging recovery, uh, recovery process for heavy oil and bitumen production. In particular, we try to replace uh, some of the steam by uh, additive. Additive means uh, solvent, chemicals, air, uh, NCG, uh, non-concentric gases. And uh, in the past few years, I present the concept, the fundamental physics, and the modeling process. Today, I'm going to present a pathway from the concept to proven technologies. Again, this is something the industry, very relevant to industry, industry could use it. And again, when, uh, working, when we are working at the, uh, in academia, we always got, uh, a lot of times, we got our uh, ideas. And uh, sometimes we have to show if the idea concept working or not. So this is the uh, way I, we are working with the industry. And uh, I uh, borrowed the slides from my former PhD student, uh, Mohsen. He's now working uh, at Sanko. Uh, for this uh, uh, technology. So uh, here's our uh, outline. And we always uh, tell our student, first, try to state the problem, and this is the why you're working on this problem. And then, once you have the pro pro working problem, and what's the research of, uh, uh, objective? So that's what we're doing. And, um, and then, once we have objectives, what kind of methodologies we're using to attack the problems. So that's how. And also the result applications, this shows the reference to industry. And at the end of the day, in particular, when we're working with, the, uh, with our uh, sponsors, and we have to tell them, so what? So this is uh, the past. Also this uh, outline is also the uh, outline we em always emphasize where, with our students. So the first part, the state of the problem, essentially what I mentioned, you have a concept or you have a new recovery process for particular or specific uh, uh, or a field or gas field, you're gonna screen the candidate process. And so find out which one would work for your Rotovo. And then you're gonna uh, uh, evaluate the most promising uh, uh, process in depth. And after that, you're gonna do, once you find some uh, promising result from your start, lab study and modern simulation, you go to the pilot. Once the pilot shows successful results, and then next step is the uh, commercial uh, project. So this is the uh, a pathway, also the pathway, the most operating company adapt. And uh, between the uh, different uh, uh, gate or different uh, steps that also you need the review from the stakeholder or from the uh, uh, regulation uh, uh, agencies. So again, as the uh, technology mature or once you know more about technology or w w uh, as the uncertainty gets less and then the technology has a chance of successful. And then when, when we are uh, uh, modeling or simulator, the, the, a new concept or new recovery process, you either use analytical tool or simulation tool. And when you use analytic tool, you can see you use less uh, data or less uh, rigid, and there's uh, 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 less requirement to make. When you use the numeric tools, probably it's real, more robust, uh, but you need real more data or properties. And remember that more complex model does do not necessarily give you more outcomes. So yeah, you have to make a choice between the data you have and how much complexity you want and how much you uh, uh, forecast and what's your objective. So the prime objective uh, 
uh, for forecasting is reduced, as I mentioned in the last uh, uh, slide, to reduce the uncertainties. And, and more, as I mentioned, the more complex model does not necessarily uh, lead to more uh, confident uh, uh, decisions. So the choice of the tool is di uh, dictated by the scope of the decisions to be made by you. And so that's the statement of the problem we're working on. And then we're going to go on what way our objective. So our objective is to de uh, develop a love simulator uh, applicable to both STEAM and STEAM uh, plus additive co-injection. And what I'm trying to reuse, use uh, STEAM and the solvent as a case study. So the first uh, uh, objective uh, to develop this uh, simulator, it has to be robust and consistent with these assumptions and solution methodologies. And secondly, it provides reliable estimate of steam solvent chamber geometry and in also the injection and production rates of the streams. And third is uh, uh, applicable to all the stages a typical steam injection or the co-injection product and is com commutation fast for practical applications. So essentially, these are the, our objective and in terms of uh, developing a new proven technology. And this is how we do it. Again, as I mentioned, in the past few years, we provided the fundamental physics. We also, we use the SACT as the base model. And we talk about softened or chemical or gases effects on the phase behavior, mass balance, and energy balance. And we also talk about the, all the models we used. And what I'm trying to do today is show how this one is applicable to real situation or real design of a new recovery process. Again, the star represents the validations or calibrations against the results of the process. The so stage one is controlled by the uh, a sim a numerical simulation or experiments. And the next uh, start is at the gate is uh, controlled in the field or pilot program. So what I'm presenting today, or what I'm fo my focus today, is the model application to this the season tree. So, as I mentioned, the forecasting for a successful project is reducing the uncertainties. We, first, we have to figure out where the consulting comes from, uncertain, uh, uncertainties come from. So the uncertainty comes from, again, for instance, is in complete knowledge of the, uh, the system model. Again, once you have concept, around the concept, nothing is new. You even have, don't have data on how to do it. So, and even you have some data, the data is really spicy. So most of the times when we're working with our sponsors, the real challenge is connect the data or get the data from them. We, when they have data, they're waiting to, show, uh, to share with us. But most of them, both our, in, our, con, uh, our industry sponsors and us do not have data available. So we have to, most of them, we have the incom incomplete knowledge of the system. And then when you have the system, you, uh, when I teach a student, when you have the models, you have to find out what's the assumptions behind the models. So when we make the assumptions, we have uncertainties around the assumptions. And also the variables, for each variable, there's a certain range of uncertainties, and also major, uh, major uh, uh, measurement errors. When I have a call, I give my a call to one company, that company may give a 1% porosity. When I have a call give it, give it a different company, that, that company may give me a porosity, 10% uh, porosity. So that's the uncertainties. It's not, they are not accurate. It is a certainty, uncertainty, around the measurement in porosity or in permeability. So there are a lot of uncertainties. And uh, once you have find out where the con uh, uh, uncertainties are, and then you're gonna use your models or use your simulator to, to up apply the concept to show the uh, success of the uh, new emerging or to, uh, proven technology. So uh, let me again use the steam and software one of the examples. So first we have the models, 
And then we have to calibrate the models to make a, pr a prediction. We did a lot of uh, calibrations for the steam solvent. For instance, we used the, uh, our analytical numerical model to against impair oil, Nexon, a lot of uh, data. So this is one of the examples. This is the SACD and the year SACD. There's the uh, expanded solvent SACD. And this is the uh, uh, conatrial SACD. And that was initiated in uh, July uh, 2011. And uh, for instance, you can see, you can see uh, this is the, uh, the SACD model against uh, uh, production data. And also we have the uh, co-injection. And this is the Bilchman rate, and the other one is uh, cumulative steam oil ratio. Again, this one is the yes uh, uh, the field data, and this is our model, and the next one. So you can see we have a comfortable uh, uh, validation, and the, uh, the, uh, the other one uh, is the model predicted by, by SACD. So again, we have the models, we validate, and we're comfortable with this one, and then use the model to make all the predictions. So first, we, have made, we need to make a, a, a pre-screens. Pre-screen, for instance, what kind of sovereignty you are using, and what percentage of, uh, or what percentage of concentrations were used for the solvent. For this ones, for instance, the x-axis is the number of carbons, and the uh, uh, y-axis is the changes in the production rate. And so you can see the different combinations of the C4 to C12. And the star means that, that that's the one used by the company. That's the uh, one uh, by the company. So from this one, you can see the percentage of increasing. And also from here, you can see C4 is not a good choice, the light one. And also the heavy one, C10, is not a good choice. For this, for this particular example, we find out a mixture of C6 to C8 is a good choice for this particular problem. So, and then we uh, did the screen, and from now, we can do some uh, 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 sensitive studies. Again, not all the problems are equally important. So you have, we have to find out which one carry more weight, and which one maybe you can ignore it when you do the screen study. For instance, for this, uh, for this problem, we started in terms of M uh, MPV, and, uh, well, and then we find out what are the primary impactors, what are the secondary impacts, and also the ineligible impact. For instance, the uh, evacuate permeability uh, to the liquid phase, and also the thickness, the viscosity, and those are the primary impactors. And then the second impactors, and some of them, when you do the pre uh, screen studies, you may uh, ignore them. So the first step, once you find out the, uh, which uh, parameter is important, and then in the simulations, those ones are carrying more weight. You, you, again, when you do the simu simulation study, when you do the pro, uh, uh, forecasting, you do not equal all the parameters. When you equal the parameters, you may make the wrong decisions in reality. And then you're gonna do the, again, because the data has answer certainties. For this particular example, we have uh, hypothetically assume that the 40 safety wear pairs. And based on all the combinations of uncertainties, we simulate 100 possible combinations. So this is uh, uh, the vertex uh, axis is NMPV, and this one is the time uh, after preheating. And uh, the right figure shows the maximum MPV. So here is the histogram. So you can see from the figure based on the maximum V, the uncertainty must be included in your study, no matter you use a numerical uh, analytic study, analytic study. And then you make a decision tree. So now you're gonna decide, you're gonna choose a D or a co-injection, steam plus additive injection for your uh, recovery of a bilchman or heavy oil. So for instance, for this one, we make a decision, we a tree, this is a decision tree. So we we'll compare the sec D, a base sec D, with a, with a co-injection, with a co-injection. Where, again, for base one, we assume the sec D, our co-injection, is 150 million, 
And then we have to add a cost. Remember, when you evaluate a new recovery, you have to add the, uh, the literature survey, the experiment uh, study, or the pilot test. And then it came up 174 million and add all the wear pairs. And also, you have to allow the percentage of, uh, of failure. So, and then using different uh, prob uh, probabilities, so for instance, for instance, SEG D and co injection, and use different probabilities. And based on finally, the MPV for this particular example, again, based on a neutral risk is a go-ahead to study the co-injection uh, project. So this is the last step. And then you're gonna have a risk uh, uh, quantification. Again, remember when you inject solvent, you have to you also the, uh, uh, recover the product has uh, softened. Also, uh, producing the solvent either from the injection or from the uh, for formation. So for this one, uh, the left uh, curve means the solvent, con uh, the, the, the x-axis means the solvent concentration, and this means the uh, cumulative the properties for, the, for that concentration to occur. Yeah, cool. Uh, for this particular example, and there's a facility, uh, the, the service facility, that facility only handles 45% uh, methane production. If there's more production, the facility cannot hold. So when you combine the, the, all the uh, uh, land facility, all the risk, you see when the solvent is produced over 47%, and there's 40% chance it's a failure. And again, you can make another uh, metric to see when is the low risk and when is the medium risk and high risk, and all the combined uh, these steps. So all these steps shows the pathway, and then we're gonna tell our, uh, our, 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 our collaborators, and, and the awareness of the importance of uncertainty has resulted a uh, a paradigm shift in focus objective. For instance, a, post, a range of possible outcomes where the assigned likelihood of the uh, occurrence uh, either, uh, is not a single property. You have to consider all the possible combinations. As I mentioned, a single one may be wrong, and more combinations give you more chances to succeed. And the choice of a modern tool is a function of scope and a decision to be made. And uh, again, as I mentioned at the very beginning, when you consider, make a decision, you ha we have to consider the complexity with the error, and also the complexity with the decision, and also the uh, identifiability, uh, uh, first of all, the flexibility, uh, and also the identifiability, uh, uh, first of all, predict uh, uh, capability. So this, all these factors we have to include when you make a decision. And finally, when you follow, carefully follow all the pathway from the validation, screen, uh, sensitive analysis, the risk analysis, risk qualification, all the matrix analysis, and then there's a good chance to succeed. Once you follow that pathway, at the end of the day, is a capital operator saving for the companies. Sometimes you may, may save billions, even millions, millions and billions capitals. And uh, this methodology, as I mentioned, uh, where it's applied to the solvent and, and the steam. And um, because this is the study, we have a few students uh, uh, working on, and we have five students working on Sanko. For instance, uh, 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 as I mentioned, uh, uh, Mosan uh, working over there and working on the And this technology also mentioned, I presented the steam plus uh, chemicals, steam plus air, and steam plus NCGs, and also steam plus uh, catalyst. We have uh, six posters in this afternoon, uh, post presentation. Some of the strength will present these new emotion technologies. You'll see them, and uh, see them in the afternoon. And even is electric, and plus electric and soft uh, uh, injections. And uh, oh, let me uh, uh, thank all uh, my group, the graduate student, the postdocs, researchers, and all the uh, assistants. And in particular, I'd like to thank my uh, sponsors uh, for sponsoring um, 
our uh, uh, study in the past 12 years, and in particular, uh, the energy simulation and the CMG uh, Limited, the Petro Canada, uh, uh, China in Canada, and Devon, now seen, uh, seen earlier, Nexon, Sonco, our body innovates, IBM, IBM CAS, and uh, so that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Mike is at the back, uh, as usual. I uh, just want to point out, uh, it's excellent work that you're doing. Um, this is uh, well supported by the federal and provincial government uh, agencies, funding agencies as well as ourselves. The point I want to make is that in addition to look at, uh, looking at recovery factors and generating value for operating companies, your work also is important in terms of uh, uh, going green technology in the looking at alternatives uh, of um, or uh, complementing the steam injection by looking at solvent and electrical and all these other things so that we don't use as much gas reducing the um, hydrocarbon footprint uh, as well as uh, maybe even uh, uh, water uh, usage and that kind of thing. So uh, you should be commanded for the work. So really appreciate it. Um, anyway, any questions? Oh, sure, please. Go ahead, go ahead. Hello, my name is Belen Sequera Dalton with the Institute Combustion Research Group of the University of Calgary. Thank you for the excellent presentation. It's really nice to see the whole pathway and how we need to think beyond just forecasting. Um, one question in terms of the actual solvent application, when you expanded the history match process that you had with the pilot from Conacher, and you evaluated additional solvents. In the workflow, was it also included some experimental or literature work to see how the additional solvents, the higher carbon components, affected the process? Uh, yes. Uh, right, when you are doing the history, uh, history matching, use the, the particular, for instance, uh, uh, C6, they're used, and then we and then we expand the choice of the solvent, for instance, in terms of from C4 to from C12. And based on our study for this one, the condensate from C6 to C10 is the good choice in, for this particular example. Use the uh, properties, the geologic information, yes. Based on history matching, we can make an extension. Good, just a bit more detail on that. So beyond changing the actual properties of the solvent in the simulator, in terms of molecular weight and so on, right. um, the interaction on the rec all recovery from that particular solvent was also accounted for? Yes, the, all the interaction in the kinetics, yes, the interactions, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Hi, thank you for your nice presentation. Coming from the industry side, it's uh, nice to see that in the academic world, you are now connecting the, I guess, you know, uncertainty analysis to your decision-making process. However, I have a question. Uh, since you are doing uncertainty analysis, uh, I'm assuming that uh, you define ranges for your input parameters. And there uh, should be a way, a systematic way, that you assign those ranges uh, based on, I don't know, infield data. And if you do that, then there are bias being introduced in assigning those ranges. Like for example, you're drilling probably the well in the nice part of the reservoir or not. Do you have a systematic way to avoid bias when you're uh, in assigning ranges to your uncertainty parameters? Uh, I'm not sure if we have a systematic way, the we're still working on it. But we, we for, uh, for uh, specific problems, when you do sensitive analysis, do you find out which one is the most important? And then we know how to assign the weight to each specific. Or we can say, in that way, we do have a systematic way to assign a different weight to uncertainty, so different parameters. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, no more questions. Once again, thank you, uh, Dr. Thanks, Chen. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah.